we must criticize to build we will my brother my sister this is the segment you've been waiting for and we are live on xylophone uh, tv right about now we are also live on our social media pages we are live on facebook our facebook page is xylophone 102.1 fm and of course uh, our YouTube page is Xylophone Media. In both cases, Xylophone is spelled Z-Y-L-O-F-O-N. That is Z-Y-L-O-F-O-N. Now, come with me into the service of God and country. My brother, my sister, we are looking at the very first story coming from uh, My Joy Online. And this was published today, the 24th day of November, 2021. It says... Classify Akufu Ado's travel information as top secret. And this is coming from somebody called Brian Achampo. Who is Brian Achampo? Classify Akufu Ado's travel information as top secret. Brian Achampo. And I read The chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament has asked the National Security Minister to classify information concerning the president's travels as top secret. According to Brian Achampo, the travel information which several ministers are currently being tight-lipped on should be released into public domain. He said doing so would fuel political gimmicks. I take it again. According to Brian Achampo, the travel information which several ministers are currently being tight-lipped on should not be released into public domain. He said doing so would fuel political gimmicks. He made these remarks whilst contributing to the debate on the 2022 budget statement in Parliament on Tuesday, November 23rd. North Tong NP Okujoto Ablakwa has filed questions in parliament to get government to account for the Arabian night travel style of President Akufu Ado. The former deputy education minister said it is insensitive to the plight of tax paying Ghanaians. However, Brian Champon said. The vehicle that the president travels in is inconsequential in these matters for as long as we want to play politics with it. My brother, my sister. So Brian Achampo is one of the unpatriotic people we have in Ghana who have no respect for the taxpayer. He claims people are playing politics with the president's Arabian night travels. He claims people are playing political gimmicks with the president's Lilliputian Gulliver's travels. My brother, my sister, it is so hurting that your father, my father, you and I, Dole out money in the holy name of taxes. And politicians decide to flout the monies anyhow and decide to do anything with the taxpayer's money without to being held accountable. My brother, my sister, only yesterday I began this segment of the program with the president's travels. The so-called Arabian night travels. The Gulliver's travels. What an irresponsible president we have. What an irresponsible MP we have. Is he an MP? Brian Achampo. He's the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament. My brother, my sister. It is so annoying and so disheartening that a man who claimed at the beginning of his Gulliver's travels that he was going to protect the public purse that we are sitting on money yet we are suffering 
Right now, the money that he said we were sitting on has become taxes. He made us understand that we have gold, we have diamond, we have so many mineral resources and we shouldn't be suffering. Only for him to hypocritically come on and squeeze taxes on us. My brother, my sister, I need you to open your mind and follow this discussion. Yet it's the me ba me ba betiti petrol prices down. My brother, my sister, only for him to come into power and run around. And this country is now known as a broke country. Epic. My brother, my sister, this country has gone epic two times in modern day Ghana. And in both cases, it took the MPP government, the irresponsible MPP government, to put us into epic. And in both cases, my brother, my sister, there was one man who was directly involved, and that's Osafu Mafu. You are asking us to pay taxes. We have paid the taxes. Now we are asking you to account to us how you use our taxes. The president has been flying left, right, and center in oversized suits with a pot belly. Feeding his uh, insatiable pot bellied ap at it, ap it, appetite. My brother, my sister, flying and gallivanting around the world. Today we want to know. Brianna Champon says, Minister of National Security, classify the president's travels as top secret. The jet that the president flies in should not be a concern of Ghanaians. When the president has the guts to come and tell us that the private that jet that the taxpayer secured for the country is not good enough. President has the guts to tell us that the private jet that the taxpayer got for the country is not good enough. Yet, my brother, my sister, we have no right to know what is good enough. He's flying in private jets that he thinks are good for him. Yet the taxpayer who's paying for all the Arabian night travels has no right to know how much of his money is being blown away by a pot bellied oversized suit wearing Lilliputian on a Gulliver's travel. And we have people like Brian Achampo who will fuel the whole theft, the whole ravaging of the taxpayers' coffers. Don't we have the right to know as people who are paying tax? This is one of the reasons Ghanaians have all taxes. This is one of the biggest reasons why a lot of Ghanaians are refusing to pay taxes. And I've said it time and again on this show. No matter what they do, you should never refuse to pay taxes. You must pay. No matter how crunching the taxes are, you have to pay so that you would have this opportunity to criticize whatever they do that you think is worth criticizing. But if you don't pay taxes, you have no moral right to talk about some of these things. I pay taxes. That is why, my brother, my sister, I have the moral right to sit on radio and demand from a crazy president, my brother, my sister, what he is doing with my tax money. Am I right or wrong? President is flying around the world, eating all kinds of exotic foods, drinking all kinds of exotic drinks, sleeping in the private jet that has two bedrooms, as we are told, and two bathrooms. And we have no right to know how much money is being spent. And Brother Champon says it is top, top secret. Are we safe? What kind of legacy are we leaving for the youth? 
What kind of pedagogy is this, my brother, my sister? What kind of teaching style is this? What kind of legacy are we living for the youth coming? We are living a legacy of non probity We are living a legacy of non-accountability. Today, my brother, my sister, any other person can do anything and say it's top, top secret. Nobody has the right to find out it borders on national security. It's a nice way of stealing the taxpayer's money and keeping him in the dark. And I hate this kind of attitude coming from anybody. And unfortunately, it looks like there are no honest people in this party. None of them is able to come out my brother, my sister, and decry this nauseous behavior of a Lilliputian pot belly. None of these guys are patriotic enough, honest enough to come out and say, Mr. President, no, sir. They are like sheep. When they go into the parliament house, and then one side says, okay, this is what we are going to vote on. We agree on that. Whether you agree on that or not, most of the time, they all told the same line. They behave like sheep sometimes. No matter how detrimental it will be to the majority of the people in the country, all they care about is their political party. Where will the country go? When we all are following party shenanigans and not the agenda of the country. Tell me, the youth, what kind of a country are you guys going to inherit? A country of gamblers. Every little centimeter, gamblers are all over the place. Lawlessness all over the place. Dampari came in and shook the waters. Unfortunately, the whole place is calm again. And it looks like lawlessness is gaining grounds again. With all respect to Dampari. Go to Choco. Almost every Friday, they block the roads. As to whether they take permission from the police or not. As to whether they take permission from the authorities or not. Your guess is as good as mine. They block the roads for funerals. When a goat dies in Choco, they block the road. When a sheep dies in Choco, they block the road. When a fowl dies in Choco, they block the road. No warning. You are driving through. All of a sudden, you see tents all over the place. My brother, don't you ever try to complain. All you hear in your ears is quiet, 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 hey, quiet, quiet, quiet. That's it. If you're not careful, you will be vandalized. Your car will become scrap. Go to Kumasi almost every Friday. The roads are blocked. And if you have time to count the number of roads that are blocked because of the funeral of a fowl or the funeral of a goat, you will be shocked. How can productivity go on? How many people refuse to go out all because of traffic caused by the funeral of a goat, funeral of a fowl, all over the place? Choco, go to Choco. Every Friday, roads are blocked. Why wouldn't the tourism minister come out and say that, well, they are now going to turn funerals into a tourism attractions. You see the kind of country we live in? Brains have taken a vacation. Human beings are walking empty shelled. Their brains have taken vacations all over the world. They are walking with no brains. A whole ministry comes to tell us we are already grappling with the menace of funerals in this country. A woman I was speaking with at Bosphorus a few months back told me that a lady came begging for a job. 
she went through the interview and luckily she was shortlisted the last interview was supposed to be on friday and she was not there meanwhile when she came for the first interview she cried tears of blood how much she needed the job how her four children were dying because she had no job how her husband was so irresponsible and the boss of bosphorus you all know bosphorus took sympathy on this girl and decided to employ her but would not bend the rules for her come for the final interview on friday you know what she said when the interview started she was not there the boss decided to pick up a phone and call her and where was she at a funeral what are you doing at the funeral who died she was expecting to hear oh one of my sons no a friend's brother's sister's grandfather died at the age of 104 everybody in the family had gone out with friends family and friends to the funeral she decided not to go for the job interview and went for the funeral of a 104 year old man who was not directly related to her her friends brothers sisters aunties grandfather had died so she decided not to go for the job these are the people who go to juju night and day jumping and i receive it i receive it i receive it night and day for miracle money but why it matters most my brother for them to go and work and get some kind of subtlety humility into their bodies and their lives no they won't and funeral tourism they are so happy to turn funerals into tourism attraction deputy tourism minister okreku mante a few weeks ago came out to say on behalf of his ministry now they are going funerals are very important full of cultural display and for that matter they are going to turn that into what tourism attraction hey why won't you turn funerals into tourism attraction when your president is always asleep he doesn't know what is happening in the country when your agri minister is nothing but a, a man who sleeps night and day more than even the president he has lost 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 count how much plantains even sell for in this country so everybody can do whatever they like because when you have a president who is so careless and so irresponsible and can fly all over on my taxpayers money and return and tell us that his travels are all top secret therefore we have no right to know how much we spent is crazy the travel that is top secret yet prostitutes are all sitting in the president's private jet we all saw how sewa Broni claimed to be on the plane that carried the president national security was caught pants down minister of national security my brother my sister was himself gallivanting in front of another prostitute's camera waiting to have sex on national duty are you a serious nation are you a serious nation a nation of jokers a nation of irresponsible bastards my brother my sister is so annoying we pay you from the taxpayers money for you to save us yet you lord it over us you make us your masters to the point that we even fear to approach you then what kind of service are you rendering to us i'm, I'm scared of my servant yet when you talk to us you lampoon us and lie to us that you are our humble servants what humble servant flies top 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 class and top 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 secret let's speak truth to power brethren up till now minister of national security has no courtesy 
to come and tell us that oh that video you saw was not a my it wasn't me it was a cartoon video he had no business modeling in front of a prostitute's camera the president had no business allowing a prostitute onto the private plane that the taxpayer is paying for to the point that she even took selfies of the president who was almost asleep or whatever he was doing only god can tell up till now they have no courtesy to account to us why they flaunted our welcome you flout every little welcome we give to you and right now we are your servants and you are our masters you have changed the rules right in the middle of the game. As I said earlier, it will take people like Dampari and the police to put this country back on its right footing. The day every policeman in Ghana would say no to bribery. The day every policeman in Ghana would be up to the task and bring back respect to the police that day my brother my sister this country would start to move towards the heaven that this country was supposed to be my brother my sister can you go to america and try to bribe the police can you go to england and try to bribe the police yet our police here they hear they retire it doesn't take five years they die our teachers when they retire it never takes five years. They are dead. Those who retire and still stay in retirement for about 10 years or more are most of the time private citizens. You know why? We never give our correct ages. In the army, you don't even ask the people their ages. On our football pitch, you dare not go with your real age. Somebody is 74 playing for the Black Stars, yet on paper he's 21. Somebody is in the police service. My brother, my sister, he's 86, yet on paper, my brother, he's 32. True or false? So when he's retiring at 60, on paper, he's actually 96. Two years more, 98, he's dead. And they write, oh, oh, what a shock. He died at 62. Which 62? And when you see their faces, you know that these cannot be 62. They are 96, 98. The other day, a friend's father died. And they were looking for his correct age. My brother, it was so funny. The age he retired on was different from the age on his birth certificate. Why are we doing this to us? But it is not only the people, it is also the leaders. When you retire early, instead of clapping for you and making you a real citizen who would enjoy the benefits of his labor, no. Retirement is like punishment in the civil service right now, true or false. Retirement. Hey, what is left with two years for police or soldier or teachers or any civil servant to retire? In fact, they begin to go through depression. Mental neurosis. In the middle of the night, they are waking up from a nightmare. Hey, my baby retired. Oh, hey, Rade. My young see dying cry. Oh, yeah, Rade. Hey, Rade. My baby retired. Oh, eh. Eh. Go to America. Go to England. Go to Canada. Go to Japan. Go to China. Hey, some even retire earlier with correct ages because they know the benefit of retirement. But in our country, it's a punishment to retire. That is why trotro drivers live longer than teachers. That is why taxi drivers live longer than soldiers and police. Because the taxi driver has no retirement he genuinely is driving his taxi. He doesn't need to fake his age. 
He's on the streets. The little he will get, he thanks God for it. There's no need for bribe. There's no need for indecency. There's no need for dishonesty. The taxi driver can live up to 150 years. Yet the policeman, at 61, you are already going. Soldier man, 61, you are already going. How many police people have gone into the police without their right age? If you are able, if they will be honest, you'll be shocked that 99.999999% of police, soldier, uh, 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 fire service, immigration, and all those services, you'll be shocked that some of them have reduced their ages even by 20 years. Where is the honesty coming back? We don't respect honesty. We don't respect decency. All we respect is corruption. How can the president's travel be top, top secret? Why? You see, you see, uh, 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 what? why? Yet when you are coming into power, there's no secrecy involved. You beg us, run around, sitting in trotros and drinking calipo. Once you get into the presidency, you become a spirit. Everything of yours is secret. God will punish these people one after the other. Posterity will judge you harshly. I leave it here. My brother, my sister, we have a lot of things we need to discuss and we're taking them one after the other. Now, another thing I would like to look at is this and it's contained right here on a city newsroom. It says, bribery allegations. Oh my God. Against justice. Honye Nuga are malicious and unfounded. And this is from the Association of Judges. Shall I take it again? Bribery allegations against justice. Honye Nuga are malicious and unfounded. This is from the Association of Judges. I read. The Association of Magistrates and Judges of Ghana has jumped to the defense of Justice Clemens Honyanuga, uh, Justice of the Supreme Court, whose neutrality is being challenged by a defendant in an ongoing case. The association describes the allegations as malicious lies aimed at tarnishing his reputation and scandalizing the judiciary. The association says it has taken note of allegations on social media that Justice Honyanuga had received two new V8 vehicles from President Akufuado with the aim of influencing his judgment in the Opini, Opini and Sedwa Gongo case. I'll leave it here. My brother, there is no smoke without fire. Just like Ghana police, the judges and magistrates need a dampari. In fact, they need a savior to salvage their name from the doldrums. Now, any time I think about judges and magistrates in Ghana, I think about goat meat. These are people who like goat meat. These are people who take cheap bribe and free top criminals by the kind courtesy of Anas Armiyao Anas. He has exposed these people. You wear your wig. We don't know if the wig is from goat hair or cow hair. We don't know. You wear it on your hair, looking like comedians walking all over the place and call each other Leonard Friend, Leonard Friend, Leonard Friend. It's better they start calling themselves goat meat loving friend by the kind courtesy of Anas Armiyavanas. Justice is so expensive in this country. Hey! You go to court. My brother, my sister, you don't have a lawyer. Prepare to go to jail for life even if you stole a needle. The cost of taking a lawyer is like the price you pay before you go to heaven. My brother, my sister, people who are on prison remand right there at Insawan prison and some other places the prison officer who is in charge of this so-called prisoner on remand to take him to the court. It depends, my brother, my sister, on him 
your whole justice. If he has no money to take you to court, he will pretend he doesn't even remember the court date. Prison officers are supposed to use their own money. The last time I checked, and this was only two months ago, prison officers use their own pocket money to get a taxi, not even a prison van, to carry prisoners on remand to court. They are supposed to take note of the date these prisoners on remand are supposed to go to court. Whilst they are looking at the dates and the times, they are also looking at their pockets and the meager salaries they receive from the government. So when the date is up, he checks up and he realizes that his pocket is empty, he will shut up. Case number 002. Prisoner who stole a foul at Fabaire to Michok against the state. Hey, come. Prisoner is not there. Next day, case 0008, prisoner who stole a foul at Fabaire to Michok versus the state. Article 40072, verse 1 says that is he around? Then the man with the goat hair on his head is looking around, pulls down his specs to see. To see. He didn't come to court, sir. I jail him seven million years with no bail in hard labor from now till Jesus Christ comes. My brother, my sister, this is not funny. Justice is so expensive in this country. See how people run after the best lawyers all because justice is so, so expensive in this country. Nobody trusts lawyers and magistrates anymore. We need a dampari in the judiciary system. The judiciary needs a dampari who will call a spade a spade. Who will come out and be bold and deal with some of the toughest cases. But if your delicacy is goat meat. How we saw in Anasis' video, some lawyers and magistrates and judges, I don't even know what the difference is. My brother, my sister, running after Anas to take goat and free hardened criminals who raped and killed and robbed. Free them. They wouldn't even read the case. Once all they remember is that I took a goat from Anas. I took some money from Anas. Cheap, cheap monies. Then they look at the thing. Hey, case now. I free the victim. He's innocent. Bam. Bush. Then he's gone. In one case, a prisoner who pleaded guilty was freed. And when he was freed, he was shocked in the courtroom. He turned left and turned right. I see to find out from the next person uh, is what I'm hearing right. He looked in the skies and looked down. The next thing he did was to tap his shoulder to find out if he was sleeping or he was living in physical life, awake. You all saw the video. So these are the things you do. You lose credibility. And nobody is ready to trust you anymore. Then you start going around agog running left right and center crying wolf 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 my brother my sister let us deal with each other honestly honesty is a very very scarce product it's a very very scarce commodity amongst us as Ghanaians I've traveled to some parts of Africa in some countries, honesty is a very powerful virtue, not in our country. Everybody is a cheat, right from the judge, all the way down to the magistrate, all the way down to the lawyer, all the way down to who, 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 who. Even messengers are all dishonest. A messenger will tell you that he has connections to the big boss. Give him your uh, uh, papers. He will take to the big boss so you will jump the queue. True or false? Messenger. How many
many times have we seen people come out and uh, tell us who they are not? A messenger in a company behaves as if he is the boss. We pay you with our tax money and when we come to the office for you to serve us, you, you, you make us feel like we are disturbing you. How can the country grow, brethren? So, lawyer Honyanyuga, uh, this is where the nation has brought us. Your ilk, your friends who love goat meat, who take cheap bribes to demean this honest profession is what has brought us here. How many lawyers know that, oh, this criminal I'm defending is a very dangerous rapist. He's a bad, 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 bad armed robber. He has killed. Yet they will go and quote Bible verses in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the court and make criminals look like saints. How do we trust you? How can we trust you? We all know this is a hopeless rapist. We all know this is a hopeless armed robber. Yet a lawyer will quote from the Bible in court and quote from other books and make this hopeless rapist look like Holy Saint Francis of Assisi. Jesus have mercy. I leave it here, brethren. Next thing I'm going to look at, my brother, my sister. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my God. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, 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 ah. This one was published today, the 24th day of November. 2021. On my joy online. And it says, two students of APSA, that's UPSA, expelled from hostel over alleged lesbianism. Hear me? Two students of APSA, UPSA, expelled from hostel over alleged lesbianism. May I read, sir? Two female resident students of the University of Professional Studies, Accra, APSA, have been expelled from the institution's hostel for allegedly engaging in a threesome with a non-resident male. Listen, all. In a threesome with a non-resident male. That meant one man having sex with two women. According to a statement by the institute, the said females fondled each other during their sexual escapade and engaged in some form of lesbianism. Engaging in acts of lesbianism is contrary to section 1.2 blah 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 of the student handbook of the University of Professional Studies Accra. 2018 and schedule G of blah 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 of the statute of the university. They have since been dismissed from APSA hostel, awaiting further sanctions from management. Part of the announcement read, The management further announced that the notice should serve as a deterrent to all resident students. My brother, two ladies decided that their libido had gone beyond normal. Their hormones were jangling and they needed a certain kind of sexual alacrity to be able to deal with their situation, their libidinous nature. So they brought in a male student and they got involved in a threesome. One man having sex with two women and whilst they were busily engaging in this sucky dicky, my brother, my sister, according to this story, the two females started filating each other, started feeling each other in some form of lesbianism. Whilst the man had his torpedo standing as erect as the tower of Babylon, ready to destroy the twin towers. As to how this message came out, 
only God can tell us. Only Absa can tell us. My brother, my sister, how did this come out? Did they video themselves? How did this information come out? I'm interested in knowing. Then I can make a very, very good submission. You will be shocked that the man who wrote this letter or the woman who wrote this letter is engaged in worse things. Was he not at Absa? A couple of years ago, there was a certain investigation that came out and it was that lecturers in that school were having sex, unprovoked sex with female students and giving them marks to pass hook, line, and sinker. And male students were failing. So if you have a girlfriend that the lecturer likes, you could be as brilliant as Pacheco Perere. You would fail all your papers. You could be as dumb as long as you are a female student and you are as dumb as the word dumb. You will pass with distinction. This That's the same school. APSA. And uh, African Studies, another school, how do they call it? AUCC. Remember a few years ago, it came out that lecturers, male lecturers, were having a field day with the females and they had thrown education to the dogs, were passing people hook, line, and sinker just like that. Today, my brother, my sister, that a threesome, a man was having sex with two girls. And the girls were touching each other. Somebody videoed it. Did the head teacher see it? Did the headmaster see it? Did the senior administrator see Who saw it? How did it happen? My brother, my sister, until the kukru kukru stops, the kike kike will keep going on. If lecturers continue having sex with female students, and a lot of these lecturers, they use Viagra. Their male organs have long died. They have overused that. A lot of them drink alcohol. They cannot even go beyond 20 seconds of sex. Imagine you go take a female student, 21 year old, full of libido, ready to crash the bedroom. And all you can give her is 20 seconds of sex. In fact, you have turned her heat on. If she cannot find a man, then she has to go look for toys. Or go out of the campus and find somebody man enough, not a lecturer as weak as carbonic acid. You see a lecturer, bald head, He's 78, yet on paper, he's 25. He's walking, he's looking for young girls. You go into the bedroom, two seconds. Erection is a problem. He will drink hot cocoa from morning, Viagra, afternoon, in the evening, he's watching porn. All in a preparation of a two-second erection. Why? Why? Why have we turned our institutions into porn hops? Until some of this rot stops, three sums will continue, four sums will continue, five sums will continue, six sums will continue, twenty sums can continue. That you sacked somebody because of a three sum, yet the lecturer. If you find out what he does, it's terrible. So what point is Black Rasta making? It is wrong by our laws to be engaged in lesbianism. My brother, my sister, I do not know about threesome. Our laws, what do they say about threesome? I don't know. Foursome, I don't know. I don't. I don't. 
what they are saying is that the two ladies were touching each other in some kind of lesbianism whatever please let's stop this nonsense and let our schools be places to 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 to, to give knowledge not pawn hubs i leave it here Absa, yo mm. ah mm, 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 mm. my brother my sister a lot of other things we have to look at my very good friend has spoken again and this is nana komia you know i love that man yes i love him so much nana komia says e levy is a brilliant move by government e levy is a brilliant move by government let's look at it and this is on peace fm online published yesterday uh, november 23rd 2021 STC Managing Director Nana Komia has charged Ghanaians to embrace the e-levy policy of the government. According to him, the e-levy is a brilliant move by government, stressing thus the only way we can accurately account for economic activities in this country. Jesus. Nana Komia, according to Peace FM, says that is the only, listen no. The only way we can accurately account for economic activities in this country. E levy 1.75 on all digital transactions, Momo included. And Akwamia says that is the only way. I am shocked at this, my brother, my sister. All these guys are bringing back their so-called paperless system has become a mockery. Their so-called oh non-check system. In fact, a few weeks ago, we went to the banks and they were very empty because people could now sit at home and tick 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 tick. They are gone. So if you slap a tax on that, my brother, my sister what happens to activities you pay for goods and services with a huge tax on that the goods are already taxed and just by sending the money you are taxed it's almost like transport tax digital transport tax the moment you send the money before the business even starts, before the transaction even starts, you are taxed. MTN will tax you. Government will tax you more than MTN. And when you look at it, you realize that this is a government that has lost all ideas. A government that is looking for money to take care of its own sick self. You see? This is why a lot of our politicians have stroke, liver disease, cancer, lung failure. Some of them even have dementia. Because they are wicked. Ask yourself. The poor man in the ghetto can live in his poverty up to about 100 and beyond. Yet some of these politicians, by the age of 50, they can't even have an erection. Before they even reach 52, they are already dying with stroke, liver disease, lung disease, that disease. We don't pray for disease for anybody. But your actions will direct the diseases at you. <laughs> I'll leave it here. My brother, my sister, we're going to look at the very last thing and we are done. To God be the glory. Today, my brother, my sister, ah, mm, 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 mm. Ah, my God have mercy. Mm, 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 mm. Ah, Jesus have mercy. Mm, 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 mm. Now, how many of you have heard that a man called Captain Kojo Chikata died at the age of 85? And I think they were trying to give him a a national burial but the man's will 
or his wish is certainly against it. He just wants to be buried in a very, very simple private ceremony. How many of you heard that Nana Pedu died and that they are planning to give him a state funeral? Maybe the tourism ministry will use it to bring more tourists into the country. Kujochi Kata is dead. And he said, private. Before he died, as if he knew that the funeral tourism ministry would use his corpse as tourism attraction for people to come and laugh at our sorrow. So he said, private. Nanan Pedu will be buried and they will give him a national funeral so that they can announce for tourists to come all over the world and laugh at the family whilst it is mourning and crying. Even him, Nanan Pedu, may God rest his soul, when he was about to die, what did he say? He said, please, take all the money I've made. Take everything I have. But take me to the hospital. I don't want to die. That's what Nanan Pedu said. As reported in the media. Take me to the hospital. Take everything I have. All the money I made. All the houses I have. Everything I ever worked for. Please, at this point, I don't need anything. Take it and just take me to the hospital. But he couldn't make it. We were told that the doctor who was supposed to take care of him was not there or he was sleeping and they woke him up and he was angry that he was having a sweet dream and then all of a sudden they woke him up. They should have made him complete his dream before waking him up and so on and so forth. A whole nebulous story. And Nana Pedu kicked the bucket. What a sad scenario. His family is crying. His family would still live in denial. Could we have taken him to a different hospital? Would it have been better if we had called a private doctor that is going to torment them to the rest of their lives? And whilst they are being tormented like this, tourists are here laughing at them, mourning at their dead. All in the name of funeral tourism. You see the stupidity of the tourism ministry. They have no ideas. They have no ideas. All they care about. How many people can come into this country? They are not thinking about how our own culture within can be encouraged. Students are in school. They are taught Spanish. They are taught Chinese ahead of their own languages. You didn't see that. You want Chinese people to come here and look at us crying. You want Indians to come and sit and look at us mourning our dead. After all, the dead, they, they are gone. Well, it's good that Kojo Chikata is not going to get a national burial. One, no tourists will come and sit there and be watching him. And two, he was not a good man. No, he wasn't. My brother, my sister, history tells us that Kojo Chikata was one person who chased Nkrumah all the way. And Nkrumah wrote it in his books. To Conakry. And the allegation was that. Once the coup failed in killing Nkrumah. He would follow him there and finish him up. We all remember the story of the judges. In fact he had been fingered in so many different atrocities. I'm going to find time and bring this thing out. Kojo Chikata lived like a spirit. Nobody knew his date of birth. Google 
all over. Now that is dead, they might bring it out. In fact, questionable characters like this should never come close to anything called national funeral or state funeral. It will be a mockery of our justice system, a mockery of the people. Like uh, the, the other woman died the other day. I think she's called, what's the name? Jifa Tivo or something. Bass Brandon. Oh, don't vote NPP. When they come into power, they will jail me. And she dies. And we are all singing praises about her all over because we don't talk ill about the dead. Same way, Kojo Chikata is dead. So all the atrocities that allegedly went around him, oh, they become nonsense now. No, sir. We shouldn't leave a country like this. When Nanado dies, we should be quick enough to say that this was the Zacchaeus of our time. When Nanado dies, if we are still alive by the grace of God, we should say that this was the Zacchaeus of our time. Very irresponsible president who flew left, right, and center with no regards to the taxpayer. I am ready to write a beautiful poem about the Zacchaeus of our time. Oforiata, when he dies, finally. If we are still alive, we should be able to say that this was the man who encouraged the Zacchaeus to climb that tree and be there flying all over and be taking his bath up there in the skies. To God be the glory. God bless you. Remember, it's been the black pot. I am not always right, but I strive to be as objective as possible. God bless you. Ghana shall prosper. Mappen. Why? Up, up in my tears. <laughs>